Hello teens! Welcome to Destined Nation. I'm Pastor Judel and this is Monday Messengers. So, ambassadors of Christ, let us worship the Lord. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before you, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Give her of eternal gladness, fill us with the light of day. Here we go! You are the one who saves, you are the one who saves, you are the one who sets, lifts us from the grave. You are the light of life, the everlasting day. You are the one who takes all our sins away. You are giving and Forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Fountain of the joy of living, ocean depths of happy rest. You are the one who saves. You are the one who saves. You are the one whose hands lift us from the grave. You are the light of life. Everlasting day, you are the one who takes all our sins away. Jesus, you are my rescue. Jesus, you are my rescue. I give you everything I am. Jesus, you are my rescue. Jesus, you are my rescue. I give you everything I am. Come on. Jesus, you are my rescue. Jesus, you are my rescue. I give you everything I am. Here we go. You are the one who saves. You are the one who saves. You are the one. the light of life, the everlasting day. You are the one who takes all our sins away. You are the one who takes all our sins away. You are the one who takes all our sins away. Teens. I'm Mai and I'm Bettina and this is Verse of the Week. For our verse, let's go grab our Bibles and open them to 2 Chronicles 32 verse 8. In the English Standard Version, it says there, With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help Amen. us and to fight our battles. And the people took confidence from the words of Hezekiah king of Judah. So why don't you read this verse all together? 2 Chronicles 32 verse 8 With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people took confidence in the words of Hezekiah king of Judah. So for our challenge every Monday messengers, we encourage all of you teens to post our verse of the week, 2 Chronicles 32 verse 8 on your Facebook timelines. Yes, and when you post this verse, don't forget our hashtags Destination, Monday Messengers, and I Accept the Challenge. And also, when you post this verse, be reminded that this does not only apply to the Bible times or to Hezekiah's time, but it also applies to us. So let's make sure to take confidence in this promise. Amen. Take confidence that the Lord is with us and will help us fight the battle that we are going through. And we know the promise of God that if He is for us, 
no one can be against Amen. us. So stay tuned for tomorrow's challenge for my Tuesday. Yes. And God bless and see you again next week for Monday Messengers. Always, Always remember, remember you are destined for Christ. This is Pastor Abby and this is Evangelism 101. And once again, we will be teaching you some practical tips about evangelism. And today with me is... Hi! I am Shaina. We will be discussing about the Gospel Ripple. We will be giving you four steps on how evangelism actually works from the scripture. Let's read from Romans 10 verse 14 to 15. Let's read it in the New Living Translation. But how can they call on Him to save them unless they believed in Him? And how can they believe in Him if they have never heard about Him? And how can they hear about Him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scripture says, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. So here are the four easy steps. Take it away, Shaina. Number one, you need to go. Yes, you need to go. You need to go where they are. You need to make an effort to be able to share the gospel. Number two, you need to tell them. Yes. You need to tell it to them. You don't just share inspirational scriptures. You need to share the gospel personally. Number three, you need to tell them hear the message. Yes, let them hear the message. Don't just send them pictures about needing the Lord or share something about the gospel. You need to tell it to them personally. Now, using technology, you can call them you can video chat them or you can talk to them personally if they are your cousins or if they are your quarantine buddies. And number four, you need to believe and call on Jesus. Yes, they also need to be convinced that they need to believe and accept Jesus in their hearts. It's not just sharing to them the scriptures and then that's the end. No, they need to also Accept the Lord through an acceptance prayer. And that's it for our Evangelism 101. This has been Pastora Abby in China. God bless! Hello to you! Welcome back to Teens in Tune. I am Pastora Cristal. And once again, we have another song feature for you that is definitely Bible-based. And we are still on our Christmas special. For today's episode, we are featuring the song, A Child Has Come by John Reddick. John Reddick is a worship pastor and a songwriter. He is a pastor's kid and he grew up as a church pianist. He started writing songs, composing songs when he was in high school. And when he graduated college, he went on his way being a full-time minister. Wow! In addition to this, he is also an artist. One of his paintings was actually used as his album cover. Wow! This song, A Child Has Come, duet with Janet Gaines, talks about the Savior that has been born for us. The promised Savior bringing new life to us. Amen! I see in 9 verse 6 says, for, uh, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So let's listen to this song.
you like our song feature for today, A Child Has Come by John Reddick, you can check it out on our Spotify playlist, Destination Teens in Tune. Always remember, it is important that we choose the songs that we listen to. Let God's Word always be our standard in everything. You are destined for Christ. Merry Christmas! Hello to you, wonderful teen. My name is Pastoria Tessa, and this is our Compass. And I have a question to you. When you get to receive a good news, how does it make you feel? We are all happy, right? Most of us, yes. How about preaching the gospel? What is your motivation in preaching the gospel? Why do we preach the gospel? Today, let us see from the scripture what it means for Paul to preach the gospel. And he said, in 1 Corinthians 9, 16, and our topic is that, Woe to me if I don't preach. So let's read that verse. For if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Here we could see that Paul preached the gospel and not to boast, but because he felt that this is the necessary thing for him to do that this is a thing for him not to do so. It says in NCV, it says, 1 Corinthians 9.16, Telling the good news does not give me any reason for bragging. Telling the good news is my duty, something I must do. And how terrible it will be for me if I do not tell the good news. So as we learn that we are to preach the gospel, because number one, as Christians, this is our duty. Duty here also means to be compelled, a necessity, and, and it is a must for us. Acts 4.20 For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. For just an illustration, when you discover um, a product that is really helpful to you, or you tasted a drink and it's very delicious, you can't help but to tell others, right? And as uh, it is also the same way whenever we are about to preach the gospel. If you really care for the people that you love, care for souls, you can't help it but to preach the good news to them about Jesus Christ, our Savior. And we owe ourselves to tell it to these people. And do you know that there is an eternal consequences for them if they will not hear the gospel? It is upon us to tell about the good news. It says in Romans 10, 14, How then will they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in whom they are not never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? Teens, this is a matter of life and death. That's why Paul said, Woe to me, to me if I don't preach, right? It is a terrible thing for us not to preach. If you have got saved, you have known Jesus Christ, and you know the implication for a person that will die without Jesus as their Lord and Savior, woe to you, woe to us. And this is a, a word wherein it means calamity. It feels like a disaster if we have the truth with us and don't tell the people about it, right? If you look at Matthew 23, you will get to see the things that Jesus was about. And we don't want to be part on it. We don't want to regret at the end of our life that I should have shared the gospel this to my uncle before he died. But because of this, I wasn't able. But right now, teens, you have still opportunity. Amen. By the grace of God, you can share the gospel to your loved ones. And teens, let ourselves hear good news when Jesus tells us, Good and faithful servant, well done. So as we preach the gospel, may we never hear woe as we make it our goal and habit to share the gospel that we have in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you so much for allowing us to understand, O oh God, how important it is to share the gospel. And I pray for your teens that their heart will desire to preach the word of God. They will not wait for four months before they preach the gospel, but Lord, help them 
to speak the good news to people. Lord, we don't want calamity, disaster to happen. But right now, God, we pray for salvation. We pray for open doors that we could share your word. Open, open wide the hearts of the people that they will be planning to share the word of God. And their people will be saved. In Jesus' name, that this salvation will happen into their loved ones, even to their friends and their classmates or teachers. I commit this all to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So, teens, thank you once again for allowing us to be part of your day. Thank you and see you again tomorrow. God bless you.